Hey everybody, and welcome to this short video on tracking plans. Uh, so today I want to cover three things. Uh, one is why you should do a tracking plan before you ever implement. How a tracking plan is going to help you avoid screwing up your mixed panel implementation from a technical perspective. And this will apply to mixed panel, amplitude, segment, endrocom, anything that's event driven. And then we'll just talk a little bit about how to fill this plan out. So a tracking plan or tracking template, as I call it here, it's really just a Google Sheet document or an Excel template uh, where we plan out what events we want to track. <clears throat> now, the reason why you should do this before you ever implement is because it gives you a time to really think through what matters to you. Uh, a lot of times I see companies go in and they grab the same mix panel, um, you know, they look at doc the documentation for implementing and they're like, yeah, this is super easy. Just send events, send some properties, and then we'll get some reports. And then they do that, and and then when it comes time to create reports, they realize you know they miss an event here and there. Maybe they're missing some properties. Maybe they find out that the um, the event names don't really make sense. And there's all these little little things that come up in the analysis that can be avoided if you use a tracking plan. So spending you know two, three, maybe five hours just thinking through it, yeah, it's really beneficial. Even if you're a small company, right? If you're five, ten employees, and it makes even more sense the bigger you get. Um, a tracking plan can also be a way to get input from everybody on your team. So you might be, let's say, the founder or the marketing person, but you also maybe want to get some input from the UI people, the designers, or maybe you want to get some input from the salespeople, right? And that gives you a chance to bring it all together. Now, um, as I mentioned, you know, once you do a tracking plan, you can avoid mistakes three, six months down the road that tend to really screw up your implementation. Um, apart from you know, some of the things I mentioned, uh, naming conventions is a really important thing, which we'll cover. But uh, for most tools, they are case sensitive, right? So when we look at something like Sign Up Started, this is completely different from the lowercase version, right? Um, and this lowercase versus uppercase versus title case type of thing is a really easy mistake to make and something that I see all the time where I'll see, you know, implementations that have two events that are exactly the same name, except one is lowercase and one is uppercase and that automatically breaks your data. Little small thing that you can be, that you can fix with the tracking plan. And the same applies to properties, right? They are everything in, in, in analytics is usually case sensitive. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about how you how you will fill this plan out. So we have one row here, but uh, the way you will really go go out of this, you wanna get your app, a web app, mobile app, or your website, and you wanna just go through it as a normal user, right? So let's imagine I have a web app. And as a normal user, the first thing that I'll see is, let's say, the sign up page, right? So I might say, okay, um, and you know, for now, you don't have to worry too much about event names and property names. We'll just focus on actions. So, you know, say they have to view the sign up page, right? Uh, and then, you know, you can, you can here add some kind of definitions of what it means to take this action. The user views the sign up page, right? Then, you know, let's say they're going to sign up, right? So they're going to uh, sign up. Then the next action, let's imagine once they sign up, they have to confirm the email address. So, so they do that, right? They confirm the email address. And let's say they, then they have to fill out a profile, right? They have to add some images, maybe name, profile picture, that kind of thing. So once they do that, right, they, they completed their profile. Uh, we'll keep it like this for now. And let's say the final action in our kind of imaginary web app is they have to submit a video. They have to upload a video, right? So let's say they're going to upload a video. So those can be our, our first five actions. So And you would do this, you go through your entire app and find those actions. Initially, you might have very small things, right? Maybe things like update settings, right? Where they, you know, someone changed their password type of thing. Um, and that's fine. You can have a list of actions and then you can condense it down, right? Once you do that, then you can really start to fill out by um, by adding properties as the first step, right? So let's say someone views the sign-up page. Maybe there's some things you want to see on top of this, right? Um, and the sign-up is, on the sign-up event, it will be a good example, right? So users, you know, we know they signed up as the main action, but we also want to know other things, right? So perhaps they can also sign up through Facebook or Twitter or email, right? There's multiple ways to sign up. So we can send that as a property, right? <clears throat> and we can something like that, right? Authentication type, and then we have values here, email versus Facebook versus Twitter, 
Uh, this tracking plan contains some notes here on just ways to separate things. You can look at that to, to get more detail. But you know, so, so we go on and we add a few properties, right? Um, maybe when they complete the profile, they uh, they were also supposed to add a picture, right? So we can say, you know, add it uh, headshot as a true or false, for example, right? Or yes or no, no it's the same thing. And then you go on and, and the properties for all the events. Um, at this point too, you know, if you have a lot of events, uh, I will also recommend for you to focus on the core things you want to look at right now. You know, for you know, for a lot of companies, they're really interested in looking at the sign-up process and looking at the onboarding funnel and then retention, right? So, so you're looking at a handful of core actions uh, that you're interested in. If an action is not important, then you can add an event for it. You can add properties, all those things, but you don't really have to implement it, right? And that, that's the great thing about tracking plan. Tracking plan can have 20, 25 events, but you only implement 10, right? Because those are the things that really, really matter for your business. So always keep that in mind. Right. So in our cases, you know, in our case, we'll focus on this five events, and this gives us a, a kind of a very nice funnel from the moment someone views the sign up page to the moment they complete our kind of core uh, action, maybe our activation action. If you're familiar with Pyrometrics, which is upload a video. Right. Once you have properties, uh, you can then go on and add some people properties or traits in the segment world. People properties for mix panel, maybe uh, attributes for tools like intercom or amplitude. These are just uh, attributes that define a user, right? So once again, so this one, for example, this could also be an attribute. So we'll add it here. So then we'll be able to see groups of users by certain attributes, right? So we can see all the users that are authenticated by email or all the users that are authenticated by Facebook, right? Or we can see all the users that have a headshot, right? If, if, that's, uh, if that's important to us, right? And here you can add, you know, you, you can really add anything. But once again, you want to add the things that you think will make sense. Um, and you can always add things later on. You don't have to capture everything right away. You really want to capture the most crucial things right now. And, you, you know, you can always add on to this. Now, the, the, the one thing I want to mention, the, the one major tip that will give you uh, for the name for a good tracking plan that will really help you long term is a consistent naming convention. Right. So what do I mean by that? So uh, at first, it means that you want to have uh, event names to properties follow some kind of convention, right? So in here, we can see that the naming convention is all title case, right? Every word is title, it's capitalized. I would actually, at uh, this days when I do projects, I actually uh, recommend all lowercase because it, it, it seems to be easier to maintain long term. So I will actually change it like that. Confirm email address, completed the profile. Upload a video, right? Uh, and same for the properties. Force everything to be lowercase, even if it seems weird. And what that means is then the developers can force everything to be lowercase and avoid issues that I mentioned with with the same event having a different naming convention. The second tip is to reuse properties whenever possible, right? So if this property, right, if there's another event here, for example, um, let's imagine we we call this a little bit more generic, like add a picture. And then we had another event where, where it was possible to add a picture. I would recommend for you to use the same property again. Uh, and what that means is when someone's going through data, they'll be able to look at this property and say, hey, in the completed profile event, add a picture meant that the user added a picture. So now I see the same property on a different event. I expect that to be the same. And again, you create some consistency, right? So now someone can become familiar with the data much quicker. So reusing properties whenever possible. And the last thing would be to create, uh, to use global events, uh, global and reusable events. And so what do I mean by that? Let's imagine that you know you, uh, in your app, you can upload a video, right? But you can upload different kinds of videos, right? So you could technically upload, um, you know, upload a YouTube video. You could technically upload, uh, let's say, um, a Vimeo video. And let's say you could upload, uh, an MP4 video, right? So sometimes I see this, right? Where it's the same action, just with different specificity and you see different events, right? So this could be three different events, but you don't really have to make three different events. Most of the analytics tools are built on segmentation. You can segment down from events. So instead of having three unique specific events, we can just simply have one global event here, right? We'll remove that, have a global event called uh, upload video. 
upload a video. And then we'll add a property where we say something like, you know, video type. And then we'll say YouTube, we'll say Vimeo, we'll say MP4, some idea. So as you go through your plan, um, you'll start to condense events down. You'll find things like that, where it's like, okay, you know, a user is doing action A, and here they're doing action B, but they're really similar. And we can probably condense them down into some kind of global event that makes more sense. And that's, and that's great because then, let's say, down the, down the road, you add a new video type. You don't have to add a new event. You just have to add a new property. That it's, uh, it's, it's much more easier to maintain, right? It's easier to maintain less events with more properties than it is to maintain more events with, uh, with less properties. So keep an eye for that. So as you go through a plan, that's really what you're going through. And that, that's really the editing process that's really easy to do on an Excel template or Google Sheets. You're going through, you're looking at events, and you're going through multiple passes to figure out, okay, how can I condense this down to more global events? How could I, you know, simplify some of the properties? How can I reuse more properties whenever possible so, so the data is easier to read? How can I fire less events, right? How can I just implement five events instead of 10 to really get what I want? That's the editing process that you're going through a tracking plan. And it takes time, but uh, it's, it's, it's a much better uh, time spent before implementing any kind of tool. And that's, uh, that's everything for today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always email me. Uh, I'd love to hear from you.